Hey, I want to do a video today on how to make a Spellbinders nestability storage binder. And so I'm using a chipboard that I've cut. Oh, and this is not my idea. I've got this from some other people on YouTube. But I cut down the chipboard to 6 by 12 And then I've also cut down my paper so I could just cut it in half. And I've used the Graphic 45 line because I love their paper. But I'm just going to show you real quick. I've got some from Steampunk. And then I also have some from... The, um, I think this is Times Nouveau. There's some Domestic Goddess in here. And then there's some uh, Love Romantique. And I believe that's it. Um, those are the different lines I used. I will include links to the other ladies um, in my description box. And the first thing I'm going to do right now, because I'm going to try and take you from start to finish, so I'm going to take all the chipboard, and I don't want to have this um, naked chipboard color there, so I'm going to take the black paint dauber, and I'm going to go along just along the edges so that they're completely covered and they look like they're black. And, um, oops, so, see that should be covered now. I'll try and do it down here. So I'm going to go through and do all of these, and then I will come back so you all don't have to watch me do... I think I have 20... or 14 pages, so you all don't have to watch me do 14 pages of this. Um, I will be back in a minute. Okay. Okay, I've got all the sides covered uh, with the paint, and so now I'm going to attach the paper. And so this was a good way to use that paper that, you know, I wasn't using mostly because I kind of sometimes get paper and I like it so much that I don't want to um, use it up because I like to you know just kind of have it anyway so to stop hoarding the paper this was a good project so I'm going to attach the um, paper down and I'm actually going to put the adhesive on the chipboard and try and get it as close to the edge as possible so I'm going to go around all of the edges and then I'll run some adhesive on in the middle sometimes you kind of have to push it back if you get over a little bit it's probably better to be over than to be too short like I did on this corner okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some through the middle so probably about three strips, three strips just right over in the middle. And then what I'm going to do is line this up with this edge over here because I believe that is the edge that I'm going to have facing out. So I'm going to do my best to line this up as much as possible. Because I used the adhesive, um, the, you know, I have to be kind of careful about this the first time. So I think that's pretty straight, and I'm just going to flatten that down, spread it out, make sure it's sticking to everything, and there we go. So I've got the first part, got some extra adhesive right there, and um, what I'll do is I'll go through with. Uh, file and probably file off these edges. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to do the other side. So same procedure. I know I can use um, wet glue, but when I was doing that, I found that it was leaving this bumpy feeling to the paper, and I don't like the bumpy feeling. And I know that the wet adhesive has it, has its advantages, and maybe I'm doing something wrong, and that's why I get the bumps all over, but I didn't like it. And so I'm just going to do it this way. So put the three down there, and then I'm going to take the next piece, make sure I have this lined up correctly. And yeah, this is the way I wanted it to go. Okay, I'm going to turn this because I want to line this edge up 
because the other edge is going to be in towards the book so it's not going to matter if it's not lined up perfectly on the other side okay so it looks fairly straight and flatten that out and I guess really I should have done my sanding already before I put the other side down um, but I'm going to go through and I'm going to attach all of the pages that same way and so I'll be back when I'm done I finished attaching all the pages to the uh, chipboard so this is what it's going to look like really quick and there are 12 pages I believe and so it took a while to attach them all and then you have to file them or cut down the pieces and make sure everything is okay but this is what the finished part is going to look like and now I need to go through and punch all the holes I'm going to use the bind it all and I have the pink one and so um, to use it you make sure that you have um, the back part out um, don't know exactly what you call it <clears throat> okay and then what you're gonna do let me move some stuff around here okay you're going to put it on the setting on the C setting on the side here for the cover at least that's what I did and so um, make sure you have this lined up correctly I believe Um, oops, sorry. Okay, yeah, I had that upside down. I think it goes this way. Yes. Okay, so what you do is you make sure you've got all your pages that you put them in the same way. And so I'm going to put them in like this on the C setting and you make sure you press down so that it's flat and then you push down on the lever and then when you move this so you can move um, move the page you can have six holes punched and so then you're going to according to the directions you take this and you push the little um, guide into the fifth hole okay and make sure it's laying flat and then you pull down the lever again free this and you can bring it to the um, 11th hole which is this one and then you push that back the guide back into the hole make sure this is flat here pull down the lever again and then you move it to the 15th hole which I figured out is the fourth one this way so we're going to put the guide in this hole and then the other thing you should notice is that it should be flush over on the other side make sure you've got this flat and then pull down the lever again alright and then there are all of your holes and so I'm going to punch the rest of the holes so I'll be right back okay I have all the holes punched and so now I'm ready to actually bind it and so remember what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take the back cover and you flip it over the front cover like that and then you insert your O-wires into the holes and I am using one and a quarter inch O-wires because I wanted the biggest ones I could, possibly I could use and you end up making 22 holes this way um, so I think in the the way that they come you end up having to cut off two and you use the rest of it so just kind of working that around and then try and get that centered as much as possible so that looks pretty centered for the most part and so then make sure that the um, area here is adjusted for the one and a quarter inches and then what you're gonna do which I'm probably blocking the view of it. Let me try it this way. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and line up. You put um, the closed part towards the machine 
I, and you make sure that you only have it, it'll handle about six at a time so make sure you have that lined up that it'll do six flush and then you push let me move this actually because it's off the table oops okay let's try this again make sure you get that as flat as possible and squeeze and I kind of do it a little bit at a time. I don't always go through and do it all the way at first. Just to make sure. So I'm trying to get make sure that's flat in the bottom. And then you squeeze. Okay. And we get the next six. And squeeze. Oops. See, I messed that up squeeze those too far and so sometimes I go through and I'll open them back up kind of fiddle around with them you do that those again try and get that flat and flush and try that again that was a little better okay then we're going to do the last four I guess part of my thing is I just don't trust the the machine to actually get the right pressure. So I want to go back and just make sure that I've got all these. So I'm just going to give it a little squeeze. Okay. So that's what it looks like. So you should have your O, and then you take your back cover, and you flip it back around, like this. And so the reason you do that is so that this part catches the back cover, and then you can flip these back this way. Okay, so there is the book actually put together, and now I need to get my dies and actually place them in here. Um, and one thing, um, the way that I picked the papers and kind of what would face each other, this, except for these two, because these were two separate pieces of paper, the rest of them are um, the front and the back of one piece of paper. So I flipped, you know, like this. Let's say this was the front, this was the back side. And so that's how I picked these. Except um, I didn't like the back sides as much of these, and so but I liked the two pieces of paper, so I just used them. And then the cover... You know, I use the same piece, same side of the same piece. Okay, so what I'm going to do to actually put the dies in is I bought some magnetic tape or magnet that's got adhesive on it. And I was about to buy the half inch, but I bought the one inch because I figured what I can do is I can go through and I can cut it to make it a half inch if I want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this first page. And then I'm going to put, let me move the machine, I'm going to put adhesive strips along here and then, you know, put the dies on there. So let me go grab one. Um, so here are some of the ones I have. So I've got the labels. And so what you do, actually I don't want to start with the labels. Hold on, let me go grab the other. Okay, I have some of my dies. Um, I can't find my... I have the standard circles large, and I can't figure out where they are right now. So, um, for a while, I originally started putting them in CD cases. So I had actually cut down the cover to fit inside the CD case, and then I'd cut magnetic, um, you know, pieces that would hold these here. So instead now, what I want to do is I'm just going to... And then I was started doing this um, because I was running out of CD cases. And so I was just storing them like this. That gets kind of cumbersome to carry them around all the time. So what I'm going to do now instead is take out the biggest one. Figure out how wide this needs to be in order to hold this on here. And I'm just going to eyeball it. So... Let's say there. I'm going to cut that. And then I actually 
I'm going to cut this in half. And I know it won't be a perfect in half because I can't cut straight without a guide. But I'm okay with that. So cut that in half. And I think I'm going to try this with just one strip. And I'm going to start with the circles. Um, I would start with some others, but I'm just going to start with the circles because I think, you know, pretty sure the circles are not going to expand some more. Could be wrong though. Alright, so I think I'm going to put the, oops, I'm going to put the small ones up here. So, I just estimate where I want to put it. I guess if I really wanted to save space, I could fit more on here. I'm just going to lay that down. Okay, and then that should hold my circles now. So I can take them out of the case and place them. And maybe I should have used two for the thicker strip. But see, now instead of having to open this or carry a bunch of these around with me, which is, oops, taking up a lot of space, I can just take this notebook with me. So there we go. There are my circles. And they feel okay. Maybe I'll put this other one on there, too. So you just peel the adhesive off. I'm actually going to leave a little space press real hard, make sure that's down. And I'll put these back on. Okay, I think that'll be better. So maybe with the other ones, I'll just leave it as a one inch strip. Although it's kind of nice this way because you can spread it out and give it a little bit more stability. Alright, and so there are my circles. At least my small ones. I'll have to figure out where my large ones are and I'll put them there. And then I think I'm going to skip this side and I'm going to put some more on this side. So I'm going to go with my scalloped circles. So I've got my small and my large. So let me take out the biggest one. Then roll this out. Sorry, I'm hitting the camera. Cut that off. Let me see what I think about just using it as a solid strip. I think I'm going to cut it in half. So cut, cut, cut. Put that there. Put the next one here. Leave a little room. Make sure that's down well. And then place that one on there. And then the other nice thing about this is that this will be good for my really um, tall, let me go grab one. This will be good for the really tall dies, because yeah, I couldn't fit them in a CD case because it's definitely longer than a CD case. So this will be nice later on. Because I could put one here. And then maybe put one over here. But um, this will be good for the bigger dies. So, like these. Those are definitely bigger than a CD case. Okay. So I'm going to finish putting these in. And then I'll come back when I'm done. Thanks.